SpaceX's boldest landing yet. Falcon 9 lands in the Bahamas? Was it trying to get a suntan? <laughs> Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of misty morning and focus combination. You know, I like that bergamot and the zing. So good, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology spacey day. SpaceX Starlink, SpaceX, Falcon 9s. What the heck's going on? Now they have a Falcon 9 landing in the Bahamas. What is this all about? Now, I don't mind it because it's right off the shore here of Palm Beach, about 50 nautical miles, let's say. Not that far, about an hour and a half boat ride, right around there. Depends on how fast you're going. So it's not that far. And that is one of the points that are being made by this landing there, one of them. So I was reading an article, actually multiple articles. I combined a bunch of them together here for you to give you the details of what's going on. I think it's going to be really good for current customers and future customers because it's going to increase speeds, it's going to lower latency, lessen congestion because we're going to be able to put more satellites on orbit quicker. Turnaround times will be a lot faster. I'll get into that before the end of this video. But before we get into this, I just want to say that if you enjoy the content, throw it a thumbs up. Don't forget to like and share and subscribe and do all of that stuff. Sharing. One of the most important things. And then click this little notification button over here. So when I go live, when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. Matter of fact, we'll be live for IFT8. It's only about maybe three, five days, somewhere on there, four days away. Be here. I think Monday is probably going to be when we'll see it fly. Either which way, if you hit that notification button when I do go live or before I go live, you'll be notified of it, which will be nice. And hopefully you can spend some time with me while we watch it go up and we talk back and forth. That's what we do. I absolutely love the test flights and there's not one that hasn't been, let's see, monumental or at least entertaining. <laughs> there's been a lot of ruts, right? Rapid, unscheduled disassemblies. <laughs> it happens. Boom. Anyways, if you just want to say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button. Click on that. Give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. The video is still free. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, check them out. They're free. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. And finally, if you want more SpaceX Starlink content, I have over 420 videos that I've put together over the last 40 some months just for you. Helpful how-tos tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy. And of course, the why behind all of it, because this channel has always been about the why. So we're going to go over these articles. And then before the end of this video, I'm not just going to give you the information in these articles, but I'm also going to dig in a little bit deeper and give you some information I wasn't able to find that gives you an idea of why they are actually doing this. What is the importance of them landing those Falcon 9s right off the coast of Florida here in the Bahamas? We'll get into that. Anyways, a new dawn in space operations, Falcon 9's Bohemian landing. In a historic display of innovation, a Falcon 9 rocket launched from Cape Canaveral on February 18, 2025, successfully deployed 23 Starlink satellites into orbit. Equally groundbreaking was the rocket's first stage, making an inaugural landing on a drone ship off of the coast of the Bahamas, a move that enhances operational flexibility and expands global connectivity. A historic launch and landing. Space enthusiasts and industry experts witnessed engineering precision as Falcon 9 lifted off from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral, marking another milestone for SpaceX. What made this flight truly historic was its landing. For the first time, SpaceX successfully touched down its Falcon 9 booster off the coast of the Bahamas. This strategic shift in recovery location demonstrates the company's push to refine operations, optimize fuel efficiency, and expand recovery options. As SpaceX continues pushing boundaries, this landing could pave the way for broader launch flexibility and more frequent Starlink deployments more frequent Starlink deployments. Very important for us. Satellite payload, version two minis versus DTC satellites. 
All 23 satellites on this mission were SpaceX Starlink version 2 minis. Unlike the February 4th launch, which included 13 direct-to-cell or DTC satellites, this flight focused entirely on the version 2 mini model. By dedicating this launch to these next-generation satellites, SpaceX is reinforcing its network with improved performance, reduced congestion, and most importantly, lower latency for Starlink users. That's a good thing. Precision landing, how it was achieved. After deploying its payload, the Falcon 9's first stage initiated its return with a series of precisely timed engine burns, guiding it back through the Earth's atmosphere towards a drone ship stationed off of the Bahamas. Elon Musk highlighted the significance, stating, quote, Landing in the Bahamas not only showcased our technical capability, but also enhances our operational flexibility. This successful landing on a new maritime platform confirms that SpaceX's recovery system can adapt to diverse conditions, reduce launch costs through booster reuse, and broadening mission capabilities. Reusability, the key to sustainable space flight. Reusability is at the core of SpaceX's vision for revolutionizing space travel. Each recovered booster lowers manufacturing costs and shortens turnaround times. A senior SpaceX engineer noted, quote, Every booster we recover is a win in sustainable space flight. The cost savings allows SpaceX to reinvest in technological advancements, strengthening SpaceX Starlink's network while making high-speed internet more affordable for consumers. Global Impact – Expanding the Starlink Constellation Deploying these 23 SpaceX Starlink version 2 mini satellites marks another step towards global connectivity. Each satellite enhances network coverage, provides high-speed internet to underserved or unserved regions, and bridges the digital divide. Quote, Connecting every corner of the globe is at the heart of our mission, stated a SpaceX representative. With each launch, Starlink's reach extends, improving education, healthcare, and economic opportunities for millions worldwide. Local Impact – A New Era for the Bahamas The successful booster recovery off of the Bahamas is a landmark moment for the island nation. Local officials are optimistic about the potential economic and technological benefits. Quote, We are thrilled to play a role in this historic mission, said Aliyah Johnson, spokesperson for the Bahama Ministry of Transportation and Communications. This event positions the Bahamas as a key partner in future space operations and opens the door for job creation, improving infrastructure, and international collaboration. This collaboration could transform the Bahamas into a strategic hub for aerospace innovation and maritime logistics, fostering long-term economic growth. Looking to the future As SpaceX continues pushing boundaries, this mission marks a new chapter in space operations. Expanding SpaceX Starlink's constellation with 23 version 2 mini satellites and establishing a new landing site off of the Bahamas underscores SpaceX's commitment to innovation, efficiency, and sustainability. For SpaceX, its customers, and the people of the Bahamas, this mission is more than a technological success. It's a step towards a future where technology and global connectivity work together to improve lives worldwide. Great articles, good information. Now, I think that this is great. One of the reasons, obviously, because it's close to me. I'm in Palm Beach, once again, about 50, maybe 75 nautical miles away from this landing spot. So it's pretty cool. We should be able to see them. Now, like I promised you from the beginning, this channel's always been about the why, right? Now, none of the articles spoke about this, and hopefully I'll give you a tidbit of the real why behind this, why this is monumental. Now, they touched on the savings, the cost savings, and the quickness of relaunch. Because once again, they're going to be landing the Bahamas pretty close to Cape Canaveral at about 100, 150 nautical miles or something. So it doesn't take that long to bring that booster back to be refurbished and then launched again from Cape Canaveral. That's number one. But number two, what they really didn't touch on at all is SpaceX's Crew Dragon. Now, why is this important? The reason it's important is because of the FRAM-2. 
So now you're gonna say, what the heck is a FRAM2? What is FRAM2? FRAM2 is a mission that they're going to use SpaceX's Crew Dragon 4. And this mission is going to be the first human space flight that's going to orbit the poles of Earth at the same time. So it's gonna go around the North Pole and then the South Pole. That is amazing. Now, why is that such a big deal? The reason this is so amazing is because no other craft has ever hit an inclination of 90 degrees. I believe the Russians have done 65 degrees inclination and that's it. Once again, this allows the craft to go around both poles of the Earth, North Pole and the South Pole. This FRAM-2 is going to be a mission for about three to five days and it's going to be studying the poles. So they're gonna be looking at the aurora, all kinds of things that they couldn't see once again in one mission. Now, doing this at that 90 degree inclination makes it really, really necessary to land in the Bahamas. And that is one of the reasons why they're doing it. Once again, yes, landing in the Bahamas is going to make it a lot quicker for turnaround times because they're not gonna to have to ferry that booster that far to have it refurbished and relaunched. So once again, it's going to be a cost savings and it's going to allow for a quicker turnaround. More SpaceX Starlink satellites on orbit quicker. The number of launches will become more. So coming full circle, once again, you're going to have a cost savings in that recovery operation, but you're also going to have the ability to hit that 90 degree inclination and be able to land right off the coast where it launches from. Absolutely perfect. Now this is supposed to happen in March. So I'm gonna cover this because I think this is a big deal. Once again, it wasn't talked about at all in any of the articles that I read, but I think this FRAM2 mission is going to be a success, number one, first of its kind, number two, but also something that I really would like to see happen and bring it to you. So hopefully down below, tell me if you would wanna hear a little bit more about this. And if you do, I will definitely report on it because I personally do think that it's it's great. Now, that rocket landed on the drone ship called Just Read the Instructions right off the coast. I always think that's funny how he names those drone ships. But yes, Just Read the Instructions is a great name for that drone ship. Now, for me, I'm going to say moving forward, this is going to help with our connectivity. It's going to help with our latency. It's going to help with our speeds. It's going to help with congestion. Why? Because they're going to be able to put more satellites on orbit quicker. Another thing that really excites me is this is happening out of my state, literally three hours up the road. Cape Canaveral is a place that I went when I was a kid back in the 70s and seeing it progress through the space shuttle and everything else, and now with SpaceX there, I think it's just absolutely awesome. I cannot wait for Starship to start launching from Cape Canaveral because I will definitely cover those and I will drive up and hang out with you guys, maybe live and do coverage right from the scene. That would be awesome. In comparison to me traveling 20 hours to get to Texas to be able to watch these. So this is going to be a big thing, once again, for all of us. So we'll see what ends up happening. What say you, what do you think about this? Do you think it's big? I do. Anyways, guys, down below, I wanna hear from you. If you're shy, you don't wanna put anything down there, put an emoji. I'll be happy with an emoji, anything. Just so I know that you made it to the end of the video. I'd appreciate that. Throw the video a thumbs up if you liked it, a thumbs down if you didn't, subscribe, like, share, do all that stuff. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools and my merch and my tees and my shirts and my books and everything else. Go over to jchristina.com, see if there's something there that you like. If there is, pick it up. Help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you in the Bahamas. Take care, guys.